And now here's the host of the show, Randy Corrigan. Good afternoon, everybody. Longtime organizer, first time radio host. This is where I get to talk about my rookie status so that when I make mistakes, I'm forgiven for the first few years of doing this. Uh, welcome to the Worker Power Hour, KCAA 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Uh, first part of our show, I uh, always like to recap last week's show. Uh, we talked a little bit about corporate America's anti-union message and how their anti-union message has grown over a few decades and how the suppression of workers and the shift in money uh, has gone from workers' pockets, good benefit plans, retirement vehicles, retiree medical, good health care, to corporate America's pockets and the reason for it and a lot of the things in which they did. Uh, I got a lot of comments back from listeners that uh, enjoyed the discussion. Uh, we have uh, many, many other discussions laid out over the next six months. Uh, we want to really cover every part of labor, uh, and we'll recap them one at a time as we go through it. Uh, today's a significant day. Uh, it is Dolores Huerta's birthday. Uh, for many of you that don't know who she is, she was essentially side-by-side uh, -side with Cesar Chavez in, in creating the farm worker movement as well as as well as civil rights for a lot of classes of workers. And at the end of the day, uh, there's an argument that she actually did more work than anybody else. Uh, typically, that's usually what happens. Uh, the guy kind of gets all the credit, which is not correct. And we, maybe we can talk to Denise about that a little bit later when she comes on the show. We have Denise Davis, who will be on the back half of the hour, who's a councilwoman out of the city of Redlands. Uh, anyway, it is her birthday. It is Dolores's birthday today. Uh, she's been a great partner of ours, uh, even though um, there's some history there that the Teamsters were bad players when it came to uh, the, the farm workers, and those, those wounds have been healed, and it's good to see uh, that we work hand-in-hand hand together. And at 94 years old, she is still driving an agenda to help workers, and she's out there uh, you know, kicking butt for the working class, and we really, really appreciate all that she does. So uh, shout out to Carlos uh, and, and others on my team for pointing that out today, that that was Dolores Huerta's birthday, uh, and it's appropriate on a labor show uh, to, to give her credit. Uh, the next part of my show are three Teamster jobs, and before I get into the three Teamster jobs, again, i got to give Carlos credit for those three Teamster jobs. Every week he does a great job of pointing them out and mixing them up, and, and it's, it's one of the things that a lot of our, our listeners really enjoy is they, they're like, oh, I didn't know a Teamster did that. But there's a shout-out I want to give, and that's our PSD department, which is our preschool division, uh, our pre preschool services department with the county of San Bernardino. We have more than 600 members that actually handle preschool services. And from what I was told the other day, uh, they, on Wednesdays, they all get together and they listen to this show live. And they, they take a break and they, it's, their, it's their worker power Wednesday that they call it. It's their way of showing solidarity among one another. And those jobs are the teacher themselves that, that these positions develop and provide educational, nutritional, and health safety activities for children in Head Start uh, preschool uh, programs at the site. They're also uh, aides, teachers' aides that assist teachers. And we have the custodians as well as those in the food service that do preparation of food. And the sites that I understand that are listening live right now are the Arrowhead Grove Head Start, the Chino Head Start, Crestline Head Start, the Del Rosa Head Start, the Highland Head Start, hopefully you hear them cheering right now in each of their, each of their break rooms or wherever they're listening. The Mill Center Head Start, the Ontario Maple Head Start, the Westminster Head Start, and the Whitney Young Facility. Thank you for listening in and, and taking time to come together, and whether you're listening to our radio show or you're coming together as union workers, brothers and sisters, that you, you, you figure out how to have solidarity in the workplace. And we appreciate the work you do because, quite frankly, Head, head Start or preschool teachers' jobs, they're terribly underpaid. The people that do these jobs are saints uh, for doing the work that they do. It's a tremendous uh, contribution to the community. Uh, we appreciate you uh, and 
we apologize if not everybody else does. <laughs> We're going to at least say it uh, right here. And thanks for listening in live. And any of the other sites that we represent or any other facilities, union facilities that are listening in live, feel free uh, to to send us something or let us know, and we'll do a shout out for you just like we did right here for the PSD uh, in San Bernardino County. So keep up the great work. All right, the, the three jobs uh, that we want to bring up uh, is first, animal handlers. All animals that you see in the movies have handlers to ensure that they are cared for, not overworked, as well as making sure that they don't miss their screen time. Imagine that, trying to manage animals to make sure they don't miss their screen time. I mean, I can barely get my dog to eat on time, let alone figure out how to get a bear uh, to, I mean, you see some of the crazy things he's doing in these movies. You know, they, they make sure that they're on time and they make sure that they're performing correctly. And these jobs are all done by members of Teamsters Local 399. So Teamsters do that. So next time you see a movie and you see a show and you see a bear come out, I don't know why I say bear. I just don't know how you can control a bear. I mean, <laughs> like I said, I have a hard time with a dog, let alone a bear. Um, but, you know, you know, horses and goats and, you know, cats. I mean, cats, how do you control a cat? Like, how do you get a cat to even do something? Uh, they just completely have a mind of their own. So uh, shout out to, to those members. Uh, the next one is, it's, it's an interesting and fun one too. You see it every single day and you don't realize it. Signal lighting tech. Many Teamsters in the city of San Bernardino, Pomona, Redlands, and a number of other cities, they fix those signal lights. And this is a skill that requires a huge amount of responsibility to the public and Teamsters perform this work every single day. And so uh, actually knowing a couple of them, I was able to get some tricks on how to trip signals uh, when you're at night and you're driving kind of alone. Uh, but um, um, next time you drive through an intersection, you look up and you, hey, the signal lights. It's likely Teamsters that made sure you were, uh, you didn't get a red light when you should have got a green light. Uh, the next one is Catalina Island Tourist Department. They're Teamsters. These include the people that educate you about the history of Catalina and the ones that maintain the island. Uh, they're all members of Teamsters Local 495. And so the next time you go to Catalina Island uh, and you're out there, think of Teamster. Uh, Teamsters are, are, are making sure that the community goes around every single day, and we appreciate the work they do. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, I don't know, you must be living under a rock. If you haven't seen our billboards that say, Thank a Teamster, if you haven't seen our buses that say, Thank a Teamster, if you haven't seen all the things that we're doing out there where we're bringing a message of thanking a Teamster and building worker power, uh, because it's gone way too long where you, workers, union workers, specifically Teamsters, are overlooked for the great work that they do. Uh, let's not take that for granted, and let's make sure we think a Teamster. So next part of my show is to move into the news, current news. Um, this is kind of fun. A strike for Aramark at the Wells Fargo Center. Uh, to They will not work for the 76ers-Pistons game coming up. And so it's a one-day strike action. Uh, they're going to hit uh, the game, and they're going to obviously ask people to uh, to honor that and you know, maybe uh, maybe they'll maybe they'll be more appreciated uh, during. I mean, think about a game, and you go to some sort of venue like that, especially one of that size with twenty thousand people in attendance, and it's you know beers and sodas and food, and you're cleaning restrooms, and you know having to. I mean, it's just it's chaos, and it is high impact. It's a lot of hard work, and actually, I got Chris sitting here next to me, shaking his head because he's probably going to talk about all that work. And it's a that's a smaller stadium; it's a lot of work. So imagine doing something like that in a big, you know, twenty thousand person stadium. Uh, good good for those workers. It's good to see that they're standing together and they're fighting and they're uh, asking their employer to honor their concerns. Their concerns are around seasonal workers, the wage discrepancies. Uh, they're they're doing a huge call for support. And uh, hopefully they can find a resolution pretty, pretty fast. Here's another one uh, that I find relatively interesting is Barnes & Noble's workers are planning a union drive across the U.S. at the bookstore chain. Yeah, Barnes & Noble's. I guess Amazon didn't kill every single bookstore. Uh, the one that's left are saying, hey, you know, maybe we need a union. And so employees in the largest bookstore chain are launching a nationwide union drive uh, spurred by successful efforts at six Barnes & Noble locations over the last over the last year and so a few of them have already organized and moved in that direction and so it's good to see workers coming out you know retail uh 
you know, manufacturing, transportation, you know, every job can be represented and every job has a right to have workers. You know, there, there, many years when I was growing up, the person at the checkout stand made enough money to buy a home, middle class job and and make sure that the economy was moving in a, in a very robust way locally. And, you know, for whatever reason, corporate America, obviously a greedy reason, has shifted to make those turnover, high turnover jobs, not keep up competitively with the, with the cost of services and, you know, and then say, well, that's not an important job. Look, every job is important. And I think that, uh, you know, we got to get back to a space where we appreciate every job and, you know, good for these workers in retail for coming together and demanding uh, they get a piece of the pie because, quite frankly, these retail giants uh, have been making a ton of cash and they're not sharing the wealth with the workforce and it's time that they start doing that. This is the Worker Power Hour, KCAA 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Uh, make sure you call in if you want to call and complain. Uh, I'll make sure I give you the mark or somebody else. Uh, I have to take complaints at work. I don't, I don't want to take them here. <laughs> So I can ship those off. The, the call in number is 888-909-1050 if you feel, if you feel froggy. <laughs> uh, the next uh, thing I want to report on is this one's, this one's rather fun. Germany, 57 cities, bus drivers are on strike. 57. Now that's how you do it. I got I to gotta hand it to them. If you're going to take it down and you're going you're gonna to send a message, 50 there are strikes right now in 57 cities public transit workers across germany uh, prior, uh, primarily organized under their transportation union which is verdi uh, it's v e r period d i uh, we work with them actually on a lot of things nationally i'm actually working with them on the amazon stuff uh, on a national on a global excuse me on a global scale and these actions are you know they formed a great coalition of workers across the entire country of germany and they're demanding improved conditions and federal funding yeah imagine that they're shutting it down saying the feds have got to help pay to make sure there's some transportation i think that's a great idea like some say oh it's going to raise my taxes yeah but you enjoy you enjoy using the transportation right uh, everybody wants to cut back and then you know, then complain that they don't have the services. And, you know, clearly uh, Germany has a very good uh, public transportation system and, and clearly it needs to be, uh, it needs to be funded in a robust way. Um, you know, the public engagement that they're putting together and the innovative tactics of this union is great. Uh, it's good to see the alliance that they have formed and brought together a coalition of community organizations uh, to take on 57 cities. <laughs> that's, that's just great. I love it. it. It gives me goosebumps and it makes me, uh, it makes me want to try it. <laughs> it makes me want to map out 57 cities in the Southwest and go, man, you think we can pull that off? Uh, as a matter of fact, we're actually working on something right now. We'll talk about that in a few shows. Uh, with that, that's our news. Uh, and then we get to, to the next part of the show, which is my, which is my personal favorite. Uh, I love having these Teamster Advantage partners on. And our Teams for Advantage network has got more than 1,000 small businesses connected to it. And what we try to do at every show every week is bring a fresh one on uh, or bring one on that we've partnered with for a long time and let them talk about uh, the, the partnership that we have and then their business. And we want to make sure that money is staying in the local economy. And we also we advertise for free, and we make sure that – that the local residents understand the importance of buying local. Uh, and in this case, it's the 66ers. I have Chris with the 66ers. And I'll hand it off to you in a minute so you can introduce yourself and talk about your great organization. Uh, but, you know, instead of going to a Dodger game and spending a gazillion dollars, and I am a Dodger fan and I'm guilty of doing that from time to time, uh, the reality is the 66ers games are a ton of fun. And that could be done right here very inexpensive, comparatively speaking. I think there was at one point, I know we were going, we bought the whole stadium out, and we got 50-cent beer night or something like that. I mean, I don't know if you guys are still doing 50-cent beer night. You can talk about that in a minute if you are. But even if it's not 50-cent beer night, the, the, the drinks and the food is very, very reasonable compared to a $15 beer 
in some places or, you know, the food being astronomically priced out of the market for a family. Uh, so with that, Chris from the 66ers, why don't you introduce yourself and, and talk about uh, this great relationship that you have with uh, Teamster Advantage and the Teamsters? Yeah, thanks for having me, Ralph. Um, yeah, I'm with the uh, Inland Empire 66ers, the minor league baseball team down in San Bernardino. And, you know, we just have a amazing relationship with the Teamsters program here. Um, you know, every year we bring over 27,000 Teamsters members through this through the stadium. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's really an incredible, incredible partnership. You know, we 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 go out to their events. We we bring you're going to be there on Saturday at the car show. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a car show in Redlands here. No, San Bernardino. In San Bernardino um, here this weekend. And, you know, we we bring Bernie out. We we who's Bernie? He's our mascot. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, we don't want we don't want you know the Republicans to freak out and think we got Bernie Sanders out there. But, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it would be a low turnout. Um, yeah, uh, so maybe maybe not. <laughs> so um, you know we we just have a really incredible partnership um, with, with with you guys, and we are excited to have that continue this year and throughout the years. Yeah, a lot of our members that go to games they comment on the big billboard we have out in i think it's a right field right yeah and we have our training center logo our teamster advantage logo and then the local logo and um again our investment in that with the 66ers pays off because you guys do a really good job of giving our members discounts and then sometimes you do some good promotions with our members directly oh yeah talk about that yeah you know we have we have great group discounts on tickets for teamsters members um and we just i mean that you guys show up you guys definitely show up to support us. Hey, when it's cheap beer and some good food and, and some entertainment and Bernie's going to be there, we yeah. show up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then not only that, but like promotional giveaways. You know, we, yeah. we, 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 we name our giveaways. You know, we, we guest sponsor our giveaways. And so your, your logo is in every house, you know, in the Inland Empire area. Yeah, we get every now and then. What what I really love about the relationship with us is I'll get it. I'll see something in our Slack notification, which is our internal posting for the for our staff and board at the local union. That hey, the sixty sixers are giving us X amount of tickets to promote to for our members, and then we obviously give those to our members to get into the stadium. And you know we appreciate that partnership uh, that goes out to Teamster members only, simply because of you know, that continued engagement with you guys. We So thank you for that. I know our members really appreciate especially when we pick up the phone and say, hey, you want four tickets to a game at the 66ers on Friday or Saturday night or Wednesday or whenever it is. They're like, oh, yeah. I mean, think about it. They get to take the take the family out for free. Yeah, exactly. So tell us about the entertainment that sometimes happens there during the day. What's it like to for those that haven't gone to a, a minor league baseball game? What's it like? It's, it's a lot of fun seeing the players of tomorrow, today. Um, you know, play in your own backyard. You know, you got, and you feel like it's your backyard because you're that close to the action. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can go right down the first level and you're practically behind home plate. You know, there's not a bad seat anywhere in the stadium. You get to see the action anywhere and really feel like you're you're a part of the team. Yeah, and you can get what's the stadium capacity is like three thousand, right? Thirty yeah. five hundred, something like that if I remember correctly. Plus um plus grass seating it's like five thousand. Okay, yeah. So you know the the being having that small amount of people there, but co- but collective, it's like being it's like being at a at, at your at your kids' baseball little league baseball, but obviously you got professionals playing. Yeah, and you're that close where you're hearing all the action, you're hearing everybody talk to one another, uh, and you know I, we we've done a couple functions there too. You have an area where you can actually like do meetings and do functions, right? Right. That's our, our patio area. Yeah, know. that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Does we, that turn into a beer garden sometimes? Um, no, it's just mainly f- specifically for for food and, and gathering. We have a, a beer garden on the first and third base side, but for that area, it's specifically for... So when's 50 Cent hospital. Beer Night, man? That's, it's, uh, that's what everybody wants to know. Thursdays. It's $2 beer night. So it's not 50 cents no, anymore? No, Was I making up 50 cents? Was it ever 50 cents? I'm sure it was. Or did I feel like it was 50 cents? I'm sure it was. $2 at a baseball game, beer, is is like 50 cents. I mean, because I think the last time I went to any major stadium, it was 
13 15 dollars for a beer like that it's just crazy yeah it actually discourages me from drinking beer which well. i shouldn't drink it anyway i'm i'm a little overweight so i shouldn't do that so what other promotions do you guys have other food promotions so thursdays are two dollar beer night everybody two dollar beer and is that for all beers or all draft beers all draft beers but i think what i'm most excited for coming up is our adrian beltray giveaway oh. coming up on um the 20th of, of april of april here on saturday yeah it's gonna be adrian beltre home he's 3000 hit hit guy yep. for the dodgers you know we're just going to be showcasing that here at the stadium and we have uh bobbleheads for every for the first 1500 give people who walk through the stadium yeah nice so nice. we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be giving out those bobbleheads and we're gonna be giving out fast so I'm excited to see that. Oh, great. All right, before we wrap up this side of the hour um, and go to a break, is there anything else you want to close on, Chris? We really, again, we appreciate the partnership. We appreciate the relationship. This is Worker Power Hour, KCA 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Is there anything you want to close uh, with on this side of the hour? That I am just really happy that you guys are a part of our organization. You know, you guys do some great work, not only for San Bernardino, but Riverside, Redlands, you know, Victor, We're everywhere. Victorville, everywhere. Teamsters are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, like your sign says, I thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. We appreciate that. And next time you see one of our members out there, thank them too uh, for the work that they do. Uh, so the first part of the hour, let's uh, see you on the other side. Take me to a break, Rick. KCAA. KCAA Internet Television, the station that leaves no listener and no viewer behind. Located in the heart of San Bernardino, California, the Teamsters Local 1932 Training Center is designed to train workers for high demand, good paying jobs in various industries throughout the Inland Empire. If you want a pathway to a high paying job and the respect that comes with a union contract, Visit 1932trainingcenter.org to enroll today. That's 1932trainingcenter.org. Are you looking for a good union job? The Inland Empire's 14,000 member strong Teamsters Local 1932 has opened a training center to get working people trained and placed in open positions in public service clerical work and in jobs in the logistics industry. This is a new opportunity to advance your career and raise standards across the region. Visit 1932trainingcenter.org to enroll today. That's 1932trainingcenter.org. Are you graduating high school soon and wondering what to do next? College is one option, but why not consider the high paying jobs made possible by union power? Labor Union Teamsters Local 1932 is open to training center to get you into the high school to high paying job pipeline. You'll learn all the skills needed to excel in opportunities across industries. Visit 1932trainingcenter.org to enroll today. That's 1932trainingcenter.org. K C A A. We're back. Worker Power Hour with Randy Corgan. I have uh, Denise Davis with me, Council Member Denise Davis. Sorry, I just had a rookie moment there. I turned my mic on, didn't turn or off, didn't turn it back on. So my apologies, Denise. That's I'm, okay. I'm a longtime organizer, first time radio host, so I get to I get to fumble with these things for a few years and and blame uh, blame it on my rookie status. You're anyway. Right. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a little talking, and then I'm going to turn it over to one of the most powerful women in the IE. Um, we love to have uh, the most powerful women in the IE on our show uh, regularly. I, I, I want to actually have a debate of all of you, get you all in a room, uh, and oh, we'll cool. have, that, have that nice little conversation. Because you all say, no, it's not me, it's this person. No, it's that person. Uh, but uh, we really do respect a lot of the work that you guys do, and uh, it's, uh, it's well-deserved. With Thank that... You. Denise Davis. Uh, so the first time I got a phone call from Denise many years ago uh, was over an endorsement uh, with her running for the uh, city council position in the city of Redlands. 
And uh, she obviously wanted to start to build the relationship. And that was really easy when she said, my mom worked at Local 995. <laughs> and my grandfather was part of chartering a couple local unions in Vegas way back in the day. And it was like, oh, well, this is easy. <laughs> Let's, this is a great opening. Uh, and, you know, that doesn't always necessarily mean that turns into a great relationship because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the children are kids that come out of the labor movement don't see it the same way as maybe uh, those that worked in the labor movement as long as they did. Uh, but your pedigree of coming out of labor, it doesn't go unnoticed. And we, uh, you know, uh, James Estrada is here from Redlands. Obviously, anytime he's got anybody here, he loves to hover around the building. So I get a little shout out to the city of Redlands with him. Um, you know, He'll remind me if I'm wrong, but I think you've been pretty good at supporting all. Is that right? Every time we brought an issue, she she's you know pretty spot on at supporting the worker issues uh, there in the city of Redlands. Always takes her calls, is always willing to listen, and you know at the end of the day, we don't necessarily have to agree on everything, uh, but as long as there's an open line of communication to discuss resolution, uh, we really really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, what is arguably one of the most powerful women in the IE. Denise Davis, drum roll, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Randy. It's truly an honor to be here. And I want to say that I got into politics really as a result of those Teamster roots. Growing up on the picket lines of the Las Vegas Strip, my mom took us out there when we were kids, my sister and me. Um, and, you know, being part of the movement that is the, the Teamsters movement and getting access. Frankly, we got a lot of free tickets to political events. Being in that space made me realize how important politics is, and it made me want to be a public servant. And that's really the motivation for jumping in when I did in 2018. And I was so grateful that you took my call for that endorsement because it, it's personal. It means so much. Growing up in a family that talked about Teamsters all the time to this day, my mom is such a proud retired Teamster, and she was talking to me about it as I left for this interview today about how important the Teamsters are in the well, lives. Hopefully she's listening. She, I believe she is listening. And if she's not, <laughs> she's taking care of my baby and she'll be listening later. Okay. Okay. You know, it, another funny story that nobody has, I'm going to, I'm going to throw you for a loop here because you and I talked about this, but you probably never shared the story. When James Ramos stepped down, I actually called Denise and said, I think you need to need to run in that spot, uh, which in, Don Rao ended up running mm -hmm. in. Right. And, um, but, you know, if Don, if you're listening, you know, I, you know, I, you know. <laughs> no hard feelings. <laughs> and Don's great. She, she understands she how is, this she, works. She's great. She, you know, we actually were like, come on, Denise. And Denise is like, look, man, I, I just got on the council. I really feel an obligation to the city and the, the workers and the community there. I really appreciate it. And you, you really wanted to stay grounded. I did, yeah. I, I felt so humbled by the support I had for being on the city council, and I felt like it was too soon to leave that position. Um, and I, I appreciate you bringing up this story. And I actually just listened to your interview with Supervisor Rao, and I heard her say, we need to find the next supervisor when she's done. And Don, if you're listening, I think that that's going to be me. <laughs> yes. You got my vote. I make a motion. Anybody want a second? <laughs> All in favor? Ah, Denise is there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We just decided. <laughs> vote of confidence. Thank yes. you. No, it, it, look, you, you have been great for working people, and uh, we appreciate that. You got any stories you want to share? You know, what, what's your favorite thing about being a council member? And other than everybody complaining about potholes uh, <laughs> because, you know, everybody only calls about the potholes they hit. They never call about all the potholes that got covered because they don't know about them. That's true. I think my favorite thing about being a council member is really that ability to make a difference in the lives of our community, to make this a better place. And I see James Estrada here. I want to give a big shout out to James. He's our chief steward. He's a big champion of the Teamsters and Redlands employees. If you're not following his Instagram, Redlands underscore employees, please, you're lost. <laughs> please go follow that Instagram because there are countless stories that he posts there about our city workers, our Teamsters, doing amazing things to keep this community healthy, safe, and thriving. Just want to give a couple of more shout-outs that James actually brought to my attention. Uh, last year, he highlighted three employees in particular, Rob Briseno, who's an equipment operator in our landfill, Ignacio Luis, who's a grounds maintenance worker in our parks division, and Armando Estrada, who's a tree trimmer in our parks division, these gentlemen have gone above and beyond, have spent countless hours away from their families, worked holidays, worked weekends. They have set up and helped clean up the city for events like Oktoberfest, the Christmas tree lighting, the Christmas parade, Halloween. 
New Year's Eve balls drop, and so much more. Uh, I just want to really thank our city employees, and thank you, James, for always being that great point of contact. Well, James, I'm just going to make this the James Estrada hour. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you too, Randy, and also Kathleen Brennan, if you're listening. Oh, she's, she's listening. She's amazing. She's been... Let's talk about how amazing Kathleen yes, is Yes, it's one of our favorite things to talk yes, about. Kathleen is. has really brought me into the Teamsters with open arms. She invites me to community events. We walk together in the Palm Springs Pride Parade. We walked around the University of Redlands for our breast cancer awareness walk. Like she's great at... Um, making sure I get out in the community and interact with Teamsters, not just our Redlands Teamsters, but Teamsters across the region. I appreciate that. It's Catherine. crazy how many of them there are, huh? There, <laughs> I love seeing the signs and billboards everywhere. It makes me so proud uh, of my Teamster roots and proud to work with so many amazing Teamster City of Redlands employees. So my favorite department at the city is the sanitation department because it takes away things that... We don't have to deal with it. <laughs> yes, that is very and that's important. James again, huh? <laughs> it all comes back to James. Right, right. So what's your favorite, you know, give me a, you know, something you're particularly fond of or like a cool program that happens in the city that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, and, you know, yeah. so here's a platform to talk about it. Oh, there's so many. I know Teamsters are all over the city. Uh, I know that there are some Teamster library workers, correct? Um, and I just had a baby last year. He just turned one. And I, I've discovered that we, thank you, I discovered that we have uh, a library story hour each week, a baby story hour. I take him to the library. I just, I'm so grateful for the staff and the programming, our recreation services division, so many Teamsters working there. I love getting that flyer in the mail with all of the events happening for children, for seniors, for everybody in between. There's so many hardworking Teamsters making this an amazing place to live. See, you're sounding like a politician because you're not saying who my favorite is. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> I can't narrow it down you're to one. You're getting polished here, Denise. You know, you're getting polished. I know. Isn't it great? You know, when you break it down, sometimes you hear these stories. Uh, next, uh, I think next week we're going to have some uh, victims of violence advocates advocates that we represent mm -hmm. on the show and we're going to talk about what they do the 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 vast sort of differences and you know is as, as wide of an array it is of the different jobs we represent is kind of stunning sometimes it is yeah it's it's an impressive array and and that's where you know, part of the reason for doing the billboards and the show is just to bring that awareness and just to make sure that everybody understands, hey, every single day when you dial 911, guess who answers? Typically a Teamster. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, you go, like a library, resource at a library. Mm -hmm. the, the How many people depend on a library? I get it that it's not as much today because of the access to the internet on phones. Right. However there is still a ton of resources at libraries. And yes. a lot of those libraries in the IE are Teamsters that actually manage those libraries and handle those libraries. Why don't you talk about some of the other resources that happen at a library? Oh, it's great. Um, you know, I looked at our library website recently, and there's so many resources inside of the library, uh, obviously books and programming. Um, but beyond that, there's online resources as well. Um, there's audio books, you know, we're, we're in a high tech digital age and I'm glad that our libraries have, um, you know, have met the moment with us. There's computer access. A lot of people who don't have access to internet in their homes, right? Find that in the library. It's a great place if you need to go and apply for a job or just have a nice calm place to hang out for a bit. And some people go there when it's hot. Yes. Yeah, it, it doubles as a cooling center, which is very important, especially in this region, as we have uh, some triple-digit heat coming this summer, I think. Yes, as we do every summer. A couple more. Let's talk about some more stories uh, coming out of the city. What's a favorite story that you took care of or some cool situation that happened where you were able to help a resident out? Oh, there's so many. Um, you know, immediately when, you, when I thought about cool story, I was mayor pro tem in my first two years on the council, and I was thinking about emergency situations. Obviously, our Teamsters are great labor partners. Also, our fire department, great labor partners with us. Um, the power went out as, as I was running the meeting. The one meeting I had to run, the power went out. And so we thought... Generator, that, generator. Exactly, exactly right. So we were immediately relying upon our incredible 
city staff to get things back up and moving so the the fire department evacuated us we had to stand outside um, but you know eventually we were able to come back in and finish the meeting but that's one one standout story um, you know other than that residents call us all the time about everything is um, minor as their trash not being picked up maybe it, it, exactly when they wanted it to be picked up and really just trying to I can schedule them. that. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, can, I can schedule it. Some people think that, right? But <laughs> but that that's such an essential city service. Everything from that to, um, you know, people who've had major water leaks, and understanding that the city sends staff members out to help them identify where that water leak is coming from and to give them resources to make sure that that doesn't happen again in the future. It's it's amazing what our city staff does. Yeah, you know, one of the things I always use as an example is water you turn on the faucet and it magically comes out in your yes. home yes and you know obviously it's not magic mm -hmm. as rick would want to appreciate um but what it is is it's an entire network of people making sure that the water is clean that mm -hmm. it's safe and that it's going to actually get there yes it is actually one of my first tours when i was a newly elected council member i toured our water department i toured our wastewater facility and i toured that facility on a rainy day, you can okay. imagine that was a memorable <laughs> experience. And it, it gave me so much more respect for the people That's there. A tough job. Day in, day out, doing that really important work for our health and safety. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, James on another on another show told the story about somebody dropping their ring in and it going down and they were able to find it a few days later. They were able to calculate about where it would be in the wow. sewer and they sent it, sent a thing down in there to look for it, and it got in between the two, you know, manholes, and it should be woman holes, right? Not just manholes. Exactly. Um, anyway, the two manhole covers, and they were able to find it, find it in the center, and they were able to rescue the ring. Like these are the things that that these people do uh, on a daily basis. It's incredible. And again, I just want to give another shout out to James for for raising awareness. And you know, during contract negotiations. The Teamsters came to several of our city council meetings um, and really humanized the Teamsters, right? Like we put faces to the, the names of our city employees. And, um, you know, we got to hear about the wide array of jobs that Teamsters are doing in the city of Redlands. And it was really heartwarming and it really um, struck a chord with those of us on the council. So thank you for doing that. One of my favorite, this is the Worker Power Hour with KCAA 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. You're live on the air with Denise Davis, Councilwoman Denise Davis. One of my favorite stories, actually, I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. <laughs> this is where the rookie status comes in. You're doing great. <laughs> the high school program? Yeah. Actually, tonight um, I will be at City Hall because I have the Redlands Youth Council. I started oh, this program. Right. Okay. We're in our third cohort. I work with high school students from all over the city of Redlands and sometimes even outside of Redlands. Students ask if they can participate. It's a nine-month leadership program where students learn about municipal governments, community engagement. Tonight our city attorney is coming to be the guest speaker. And these students are amazing. They helped uh, organize a resource fair at our Project Home Key, our Good Night Inn project, our permanent supportive housing project, which is actually on the west side of town in my district. Um, they're really concerned about the environment. They're concerned about issues of um, mental health, especially at the high school level. So they're doing a lot of group projects and a lot of community engagement. You know, I think that's one of the things that, that our society is missing mm -hmm. is understanding how government works yes understanding our civic responsibility you mm -hmm. know you hear a lot of people sit around and complain oh this and the mayor and the da, da, da. number one they don't even know who their mayor is that's true they don't know who the council member is mm -hmm. they don't understand the governance of an an, of an entity and one of the things that that people will like whimsically say they need to do this they need to do that well one of the things that's happened in government is they're have been so many rules put in place mm -hmm. to prevent it from being whimsical yes. in a negative way that it bureaucracy, mm -hmm. which was driven by public policy, mm -hmm. has right. created it to be a slow moving situation sometimes. It is. Not the fault of the individuals that are there now. It's the, f 
it's just the system because there was so much distrust mm -hmm. created mm -hmm. and it's well we need a rule to do this and we need a rule to do that and we need a rule to do this and we need a rule to do that and then everybody gets mad when it takes forever to get something mm -hmm. done it's like yeah there's 472 rules i had to jump through mm -hmm. to fill a pothole yeah and and you want to blame government no you got to kind of blame the people a little bit mm -hmm. because if the people are demanding a policy to be afraid if something's going to happen and you have to put the policy in place, then it's up to the institution to follow the policy, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that that the more we educate the general public on their civic responsibility and how that engagement works, mm -hmm. then people sit back and go, oh, I didn't understand that. I, oh, I didn't get my permit. I remember I had this conversation with a cousin of mine in Colorado. He's freaking out over the permit. He was railing about the city and this and that. And I was like, uh, have you gone down there and just asked mm -hmm. one of the code enforcement officers or an engineer for help? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If yeah. you just ask them for help, they're going to help you. But if you go in and you start screaming at them, right. I, all they're going to do is try to protect themselves thinking that you're trying to get them in trouble. Yeah. And he took me up on it, mm -hmm. went down there, and you know what? The, the, the code enforcement officer explained to him exactly what he needed to do on the permit process to make mm -hmm. it so much easier and ironically so, he actually called me and said, oh, I, okay, my bad. Mm -hmm. I learned something new. But what that did is it opened my eyes to the fact that people just don't understand the process. Mm -hmm. I, I love that story you just shared. And that was actually one of my main campaign platforms when I first ran was making government more accessible to, to the everyday resident of the city of Redlands. And one way I do that, I'm a big Instagram user as well, uh, after every council meeting, I do a council meeting recap, so maybe a three, four, five minute recap of what we talked about in the last two or three hours on the dais. Uh, and people have shared with me. I go to the grocery store, I go all sorts of places, and people say, I watch your Instagram videos, and I feel like I know more of what's happening at the city of Redlands that I never knew before. Right? And so I, I would encourage everyone to do what, what you encourage that person to do, it's to reach out to your City Hall, reach out to your city workers. That's what we're here for. And don't just go down to City Hall mm -hmm. when you're mad. Right. <laughs> like, what? Like, we, we run into something very similar in the union, right? Like, yes. The, the hall gets filled up and everybody's mad. It's like, okay, well, where have y'all been? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Yeah. Well, when times are good, we, you know, no, 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 no. Actually, when times are good, that's when you should be engaged. Yeah. Because then when the, strug the struggle or the challenge happens, it's easier to resolve the problem. That's true. We do appreciate when people come and make public comments or send us emails and thank us for the good things happening in the city. Well, we appreciate you. We appreciate, obviously, all the Teamsters in Redlands, and we think they're the greatest ever uh, because yes. even, you know, not just James sitting over here, you know, gloating, and you know, he's, his head's going to get really big because, you know, he's, you know, I don't know. He's just, this is James Estrada. Here. I love it's it. It's the James Estrada hour. <laughs> Oh, his his all everybody in his team's gonna love. This. They're gonna grill him so bad with this that, that, that he's not gonna live this down. But you know, and, and let's let's drill down more on the on the on the kids. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important for us to spend more time in the schools, mm -hmm. explaining how government operates, explaining the responsibility yeah. to go and uh, you know like maybe one or two council meetings a year. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to every one of them. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and I encourage our youth council to attend the council meetings. Um, and you've just given me an idea. I think I'm going to invite you and or James to speak to the youth council to let them know the importance of labor unions and, and how they can get involved as they enter the workforce. You know, we will be there, and I have a lot of fun with those. I'll give you an example. I don't know if you heard the show where I went and spoke before one of the uh, the, the water associations for the state of California. It's about... 300 plus individuals that are there that work in water and I, the acronyms come slipping me right now i'm sure james will remind me here in a minute but i went to speak there and the the thing that stuck out to me was a lack of everybody in the room understanding how their jobs came about mm -hmm. yes and so what i did is i spent time i went back in time and i i, I tried to identify the first law that was passed to try to create some protections for water. Mm -hmm. 
And there was a, a law in 1899 passed, the Bridges and Harbors Act. It was really to protect commerce. There was a little bit about protecting the water, but not much. Mm-hmm. It was really not really any environmental friendly. You got to get all the way to the 60s for something to start passing. And then really in the 70s uh, for something, you know, uh, some substantive mm-hmm. to protect water. Because if you look back in 1860, I think it was 1865, cholera killed millions in the Northeast yes. from water, yes. from the water. And so what I did with this group is I broke down the history of their jobs and how their jobs became, came to being. Wow. And that don't take that for granted because there are some people out there that will say, cut taxes, cut this, cut that. Mm-hmm. We don't need the EPA. We don't need this. We don't need that. And those jobs are actually saving more lives than the mm-hmm. police department and the fire mm-hmm. department together. That's a great point. That's a really powerful point. Those, you know, you wouldn't think that that's a group of excitable people, mm-hmm. but we got, I got them excited. Good. I got them fired up, man. You, you have a talent, Randy. I, you know, I have fun with that. So I was able to get them pretty fired up. And even though it's a group that's not, you know, it's not your typical, rah, rah, let's, go, let's go burn something down. Yeah. Uh, you know, they really enjoyed and, and what I tried to do also was challenge them. And this is the reason I'm saying this. I think it's an idea for, for the youth, too, mm-hmm. is challenging them to understand how their specific job came into existence, what regulatory factor did it, and who was behind making sure. It was probably a labor union. It was probably one of the groups we, we have coalitions with to make sure that people don't die from the water. Okay, you're definitely coming to the youth council. This is such right. an such an important <laughs> lesson. I appreciate that. Well, it's fun. What I what I think is fun about it is when you start peeling back the layers because today it, we're in a time socially where we're we take for granted what came before us. That's true. And I get we should always ask for more when appropriate, but before we take that first step, first appreciate how the journey got us here mm-hmm. to this point. Otherwise, we could take for granted how our initial foundation was established. And I feel like that's where we are, where everybody's got a comment and everybody's got a social media page and everybody's an expert and everybody's got an opinion and they want to actually change the facts to support their opinion. I got that from Kathleen Brennan, by the way. Um, yeah. So let's, 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 let's shift gears real quickly and let's talk about how great Kathleen Brennan is. I'm- Again, we can have a Kathleen love fest. I hope you're listening right now, Kathleen. She is. She's an, ama- <laughs> she's an amazing leader. She's an amazing representative for the team. Isn't it great how responsive she is, too? She's so responsive. You know, we can chat on social media. We can chat over the phone. She gets back immediately. Um, everyone who I know who's met Kathleen just absolutely falls in love with her immediately. Yeah, you know, and it's funny because you you may not know the story. The first time Kathleen and I met, she was she gave me a hard time. Did she? Yes, yes. She, <laughs> good, she jammed good, me good pretty hard. Yeah, good she was. And, and, you know, what I love so much about Kathleen is that when I explained to her the things she was wrong about <laughs> in a very, you know, very, very diplomatic way. I didn't argue with her. I said, okay, I understand where you're coming from, but what about one, two, three, four, and five? Yeah. And, and then I pointed out some more things and some more things. And then she was willing to listen. Mm-hmm. And even though maybe right out the gate, she didn't agree. And then as time went on, she did her research and then she went, you know what? We can make something happen. Yeah. And now she's the president of our organization. Which is incredible. Um, Her visibility, her representation is incredible. She's done a lot to diversify the Teamsters and to really elevate women in the LGBTQ community within the Teamsters. She deserves so much credit. She does. I think we should erect a statue for her. Why not? <laughs> she's she's going to be like, ready? Oh, I'm going to get I'm going to get text messages here in about 5 <laughs> minutes. Hey Rick, how much time do we got? We got five minutes. This is where my again my rookie status comes in. I'm a longtime organizer, first time radio host. So, uh, and I, I'm having a lot of fun with this. Actually, I, I've had a lot of people that are listening to the show from other parts of the country and from uh, other areas within Southern California, and I'm starting to get these kind of fun comments out of the blue that I don't expect. I'll show up at a meeting, mm-hmm. and someone will say, "Hey, you did da 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 da," and I would not even expect that they were listening to the show. And, you know, they're, they like live in Laguna or maybe they live in San Diego or they live in commerce or they live up in, up in the high desert or they live, you know, somewhere in Ventura Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, oh, oh really? Okay, cool. And then they talk about what they like about the show. And then I'm like, all right, well, I, I appreciate that. Thanks for sharing. And then they'll give me an idea and I'll be like, not a problem. Let me run with that, but just do me a favor and share the show. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I am so glad that you have this platform. It makes me really excited um, and just heartened that the Teamsters are expanding their reach so much. We know that a Teamster contract is great for everyone, not just the people who are Teamsters. You know, you grew up in that household. That is, that is true. I hear that all the time. It's great for our economy. It's great for people who have wonderful benefits and our healthcare system. It's really important to have those good benefits. You know, our show is the only labor show in the IE other than the Rick Smith show. Now, Rick Smith's out of Ohio, and he's obviously a nationally syndicated, carried show all over the country. He's a good friend of mine. He's a great guy, by the way. I want to do a nice little shout out to him. Uh, he's, a matter of fact, I think he was just uh, rated number 78 on today's Talks Magazine or something like that. So, um, you know, he's, he's phenomenal, but he's not homegrown, you mm-hmm. know. I love, I love you, Rick, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're not from the IE. We have an IE show for labor. Yes. And there is 5 million people that live in the IE. This is a very working class area, and we're hoping that we could use this show to connect to workers and explain to them how to build worker power and, and, and for them to respect how to bring together the community, how to bring elected officials like yourself mm-hmm. or Don or others. And it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican or independent. None of that stuff, none of that stuff has an argument here. What really matters is how are you taking care of working people and mm-hmm. then connect them to the small business community connect them to the training center connect them to the programs with the kids right Mm -hmm. and 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 have this integration where okay if maybe some of the systems aren't doing the things that we need instead of complaining about it why don't we just get to work yeah that's what we're doing that's what teamsters local 1932 is doing Mm -hmm. and you're seeing it you're seeing the branding of it we are i was gonna say i'm ready sign me up i'm ready to to get to work to help this mission let's go (laughs) this is great (laughs) so James, did this work out as good as you thought it would? Even better. Even better? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm telling you, I, I'm having a lot of fun on the show. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm not doing it to, to promote myself. I have no ambition to run for any political office, zero ambition to run for any office higher within my union. And y'all can hold that against me, anybody that's listening to this. <laughs> like, I'm right where I want to be. I am good <laughs> in a sense that I don't need to try to elevate in any way. Uh, but... For me, it's like having a conversation with mm-hmm. workers. Yeah. And we're just having this big house call where, where we're just constantly being able to give a little bit of information at a time so that people can be more and more connected to how good unions are for mm-hmm. their community. We're t- I'm tired of us getting villainized. And mm-hmm. why not use a platform like this to f- let people t- t- connect for free? Yeah. I mean... Your reputation precedes you, my friends. I'm so glad that you have this platform. Thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing. It's crazy you say that because I always look at myself as this crazy, troublesome kid from Fontana (laughs) that is not the best of persons. And when I hear people make compliments to me, like I don't... It, I'm like, uh, You okay. are the, the Randy <laughs> Corgan. I don't know. It's not. You're doing big things. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. We're, we're just, what I've been able to do, we got two minutes. How, many, how much time we got, Rick? One minute. One minute. What I feel like I've been successful in doing is just sitting down and getting people of common interest to get things done. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of fun in that space. There's some challenges that come with it, but there's a lot of fun in that space. So I'll wrap the show up. Thank you for being here, Denise. Thank um, you for having me. Really appreciate this. Uh, what can you do to build worker power? Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Talk to your neighbor. Longtime organizer, first-time radio host, Randy Corgan, signing off. <laughs>